My faith has been tried. Good morning, everybody. God bless you. Satan has attempted Looking forward to joining to you this morning on this morning life. Bible study. He's Enjoy this abused. song by Ron Canoli this morning. Accused I still have joy. I'm not going to allow anybody or anything to take my joy from me. Praise God. So God bless you, everybody. My soul, but I still have joy. I still have joy. After all I've been through, I still have joy. I still have joy. Oh yes, yes. I still have joy. Praise God. I still have joy. Give me some After thumbs up, everybody. I've some hearts, through, some praise unto the Lord this I morning. Good morning, everybody. Joy. We still have joy. Friends have left me. They've questioned my faith. The good I tried to do was thrown back in my face. The hurt it's a beautiful and song. The I still got joy, no matter what. The joy of the Lord eyes. is our strength this morning, everybody. But God has replaced the blessing for every tear that I've cried. I still have joy. Yes, I still have joy. After all. You still have joy this morning. You still have joy. Give me some hearts and thumbs up. Praise God. Yes, I still have joy. You know the Bible says that the we're just waiting for folks to come on, everybody. The joy of the Lord is and our when strength. We can put our trust in the Lord. When we begin to rejoice and when we begin to praise Him. It's amazing what God will do. He will give peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes, Amen. He will. Hallelujah. Bring it up. I still have peace. I still have, still have peace. peace. Still Amen. Have peace. After all I've been through. After all I've been through. I still have peace. I still have oh, peace. praise God. A beautiful morning, everybody. I still have peace. Just wait another minute. After all 30 I've seconds been through. to run. People, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to stand here and pretend that, that I've done everything right. No, I haven't. Because just like you, this will preach all by itself in the song this morning, everybody. Good but I morning, thank everybody. God tonight for his love and his forgiveness. Yes. Because every time I go to him, he's there to clean me up, to, to forgive me of my sins and give me another chance. And I know yes. in my heart, I know he's beyond the shadow of a doubt that he will yeah. never leave me, he will never forsake me. Oh, sing it with me. I still have his love. One more time. I still have his love. I still have his love. After all I've been through, I still have his love. Oh, God, God is good this morning, everybody. Still I really enjoy the song. I made mistakes, but I still have his love. Oh, I still I have his love. I still have joy. I still have joy. Don't let anybody steal his joy. After all I've been through, I still have joy. The devil could not take it away from me. I still have joy. I still have joy. After all I've been through. After all I've been through. Isn't that a beautiful song? Amen. That's such an encouraging song. I thought you would enjoy to hear it this morning, everybody. God bless you on this Monday morning. Praise God in September, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. I hope you had a, a good weekend. I hope uh, 
Uh, you've experienced the presence and the abundance and the blessing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Well, God bless you, everybody. Come, uh, if you have your Bibles today, let's go to Ecclesiastes. We're going to go to the book of Ecclesiastes this morning. And uh, I tell you what, I was reading this uh, chapter even last night, just last night. And I, 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 uh, I was so blessed by it that I thought I would share to encourage you. So the book of Ecclesiastes, if you don't know what that is, go to the book of Psalms, and then work your way towards the New Testament, and go to Proverbs, and the next one will be Ecclesiastes. Praise God. We're standing by faith for you on this Monday morning for the week to come, that the presence and power of the Holy Spirit will be with you all. Praise God. And that this week, God will do the miraculous in your life. And you'll experience the promises of God being fulfilled in your life. Praise God. Amen. But I thought this was a very fitting scripture for to start our week. week excuse me, our week off this week. I drank a whole bunch of water before I started. So uh, I got, hopefully I'm not getting the hiccups. But uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, as we wait for people to get there, this will be an encouraging chapter for you this morning. Praise God. It really encouraged me last night. As, a, as you know, there's so much going on in the world today, and there's so much talk about all these different things that are happening. But I just want to encourage, amen, Danny. Claim it, Danny. Claim it. You, you're getting a miracle, buddy. And I'm, I'm just standing by faith with Danny. Everybody, let's stand by faith with Danny. He's going through a challenge in his life, an attack on his family, an attack on his body. We're standing by faith, Danny, and speaking by faith. The miraculous power of Jesus is touching your life and home. Praise God. Uh, but with everything that's going on, everybody, every, all the challenges, all of the talk, all of what's uh, being said in the news and on TikTok and on the media and people exposing stuff, I just felt in my spirit that I'm not going to let this get me down. As I preached in our church yesterday, and I'm sorry for those who couldn't see it because our camera broke yesterday, um, and we're going to get that fixed. But I, I tell you what, I, we are not afraid of death. And because we're not afraid of death, no man, no person, not even the devil can control our lives. Because we recognize, praise God, that our lives are hidden in Christ. We have eternal life. We have a greater life that's ahead of us than it, that we're living in now. Uh, and uh, we're not going to allow anything to control us. Praise God and uh, and put us into bondage. We don't have to be there. Amen. And this portion of Scripture is going to encourage you on that today, this morning. So let me start reading it. Ecclesiastes 11.1. 1. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation today because it's a little bit more uh, easy to understand for many. It says this, Give generously for your gifts will return to you later. Divide your gifts amongst many. For in the days ahead of you, yourself may need much help. And that's pretty standard. That's really what I, I don't want to draw the, my attention on, our attention on this portion of this chapter, but it's really good. Family, I just want to encourage you. The Bible says in the New Testament, see, this is, this is the Old Testament. This is Solomon, the wisest man that ever walked the face of the earth outside of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Solomon is telling us the importance of being a giver, uh, and not just to the church, but to people and to bless others around us and how that will return to us. Isn't that, isn't that what Jesus said? Given it will be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together uh, and running over. Shall man give in your bosom? Isn't that what uh, Paul told the church of Galatia, that whatever man sows, that shall he also reap? So I want to encourage you, no matter what they're saying out in the world today, don't let it affect Affect your response to the Word of God. Don't let their threats, their actions, and all of the concerns of the world affect your obedience to the Word of God and your continual generosity to the kingdom, to the work of God, and to others because it works in every climate. It works in every situation. Verse 3 says, When the clouds are heavy, and the rains come down when a tree when a tree falls whether south or north the die is cast for there it lies if you wait for the perfect conditions 
you will never get anything done. And that's that is so that's such a powerful verse. If we wait for the perfect conditions, we'll never get anything done. And faith doesn't wait for the perfect condition. Faith moves on the promise, the word of God, the promise of God, the command of God. And Solomon is simply saying, if we're waiting uh, for everything just to be right before we go out and sow, before we out, go out and release our faith, before we go out and do things, then we'll never get anything done. And we cannot allow this time to hold us up as believers. We're going to continue to occupy till he comes. We must continue to press forward regardless of the current opposition. And we must continue to do the works of God and labor for his glory, praise God, and continue to build our families and our homes and our lives. No matter what is in the horizon, I and you must continue to move by faith. And that's what we're going to do this week on this beautiful Monday morning and this day of life that God gave us. Praise God. We just don't give up. We don't give up and we don't give in. As I told our church yesterday, no matter what they're going to try to do, I'm hearing about lockdowns and masks and everything. We're not giving up. We're not giving up. We're not going to stop. We're going to continue to obey God and continue to press forward regardless of what the conditions of life are. Praise God. The Bible goes on in verse 5, says, God's ways are as mysterious as the pathway of the wind and as the manner in which a human spirit is infused into a body, in, into a little body of a baby, while it is yet in its mother's womb. Praise God. Isn't that beautiful right there? A spirit, the Bible says, the spirit, our spirit was put inside of us in our mother's womb, which would be that conception which proves life begins at conception, and that God's ways are mysterious, not to us, not to us who are led by the Spirit of God, but to the world. The world doesn't understand the ways of the Lord. The unbeliever doesn't understand the ways of the Lord. The religious man doesn't understand the ways of the Lord. But you and I, who are the children of God because we're led by the Spirit of God, we understand the way of God, and we understand the, the manner of, by which he conducts his affairs, praise God. And the Bible says that, you know, as the body of a baby, while it's yet inf infused, I like that, into its mother's womb, praise God. Keep on sowing your seed, for you never know which, which will grow. Perhaps it all will grow, and I believe it will, when it's sown in faith, in obedience to the promise and the word of God, everything that we do will grow when it's done according to God's plan, purpose, will, and his word that will never return to him void. So family, I just felt in my spirit this morning to encourage the body of Christ and encourage uh, our lives that, again, we will never stop serving the Lord. We will never allow the devil to discourage us so much or come against us so much that it thwarts God's will for our lives. Hallelujah. Uh, and here it is. Verse 7 is really what I really uh, what I want to uplift you with and encourage you through the week. It says this, it is a wonderful thing to be alive. Maybe you'll put that up on the screen this morning. It is a wonderful thing to be alive. It is a wonderful thing to have life. It is a wonderful thing that God gave us this life. And the Bible says that he gave us this life in the womb of our mother when we were conceived. What a beautiful scripture by Solomon. You know, this 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 portion of scripture, of course, Solomon wrote uh, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Songs of Solomon. And this scripture was written around 930 B.C. family. So this scripture was written, think about this, about 3,000 years ago. Yet it's so applicable for our lives today. It is a wonderful thing to be alive. Verse 8, if a person lives to be very old, let him rejoice in every day of life. Let us rejoice in every day of life. 
That's what we're going to do. Now, I'm middle age. Some of you are younger, young. Some of you are older. But we're all going to rejoice. Praise God. I, I'm not. I'm not going to let the devil rob me of my joy. As as uh, Ron Canoli sung so uh, wonderfully this morning. I still have joy. I still have His love. I still have His victory in my life. Praise God. What can man do to me? If God be for us, who can be against us? So we're going to rejoice in this time, especially if we're old. We are to let Him rejoice every day of life. But let him also remember that eternity is far longer and that everything down here is futile in comparison to eternity. Now, I'd added that word, eternity. You know, the Lord's been really speaking to me to just talk to the body of Christ about heaven again. Uh, I think we have done an injustice in the pulpits of our nation by not speaking enough about heaven. And how amazing it is. The word futile means that, that uh, uh, useless or incomparable. Uh, really, the better interpretation there is incomparable. So whatever's down here is not comparable to what is up there in heaven. Praise God. And so it's saying for us older folks here to rejoice every day for the life that God has given us, regardless of what is happening, because at the beginning he's talking about trouble and challenges and uncertainties and continually sowing uh, and honoring the word of God and being a giver. And now he's saying, no matter what's going on in our, in our age, let's rejoice, let's give God praise, and let us remember that eternity is far longer than this life. Hallelujah. And we have so much in our future. We have more life in our future than we do, that, than the life that we've lived in our past. So this is a day to rejoice. Praise God, no matter what. Think about that. You have more life in your future than you've already experienced in your past. And you can say, well, but Pastor, I'm, I'm getting up there. I mean, I'm 70. I'm getting closer to 80. Yet you still have more life to live because you, if Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you're going to live in eternity. That's what Solomon is saying. He's, he is solidifying things right here for us on this beautiful morning. You know, when my father passed away a few weeks ago, as you know, uh, I, you know, just feeling the pain of that, a great man of God encouraged me so much. And uh, his name is Rick Pearson, just a wonderful man of God, a great eschatologist, by the way. And here's what he said. He said, your father is more in your future than he was in your past because your father is in heaven with Jesus where we all are going to be. Isn't that beautiful? Praise God. And that's what Solomon is alluding to here. It is a wonderful thing to be alive. If a person lives to be very old, let him rejoice in every day of his life, but let him also remember that eternity is far longer and that everything down here is futile in comparison to up here. As I quoted to our church yesterday, the first verse I learned as a Christian was, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has entered into the hearts of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Praise God. The most wonderful things that we could ever witness on this earth are not in comparison to what we will experience in heaven. And I feel we've done an injustice in the church not encouraging people about a heaven uh, because if, if all people can see is what's on the earth, they can become very discouraged very quickly. If all of our life is only found in this present place, uh, in this world, we can become very defeated and very sad because as we look out over the horizon of this world, we see trouble, we see tribulation, we see oppression, we see injustice. And we can become very discouraged in all of that. But when our eyes can look beyond this world and look into the world of glory and of what God has made for us and what he has prepared for us, for those who love him, oh, the things of this world will melt like wax 
and all of the troubles will seem minuscule because there's so much more ahead of our lives that are so wonderful. Praise God. And for that, we rejoice today. Amen. And give him praise. No matter what man tries to do to us, we have the victory. No matter what threats come our way, you can't scare us. Why? Because we're not afraid of death. We're not afraid of the future because everything in our, it's only a bridge to where we're going. Amen. And so time, so many times we forget Jesus saved us all by dying on that cross. Not just so we can have a great life down here. He died on that cross for a very important thing, that our sins could be washed away. We could be forgiven of that sin and that we could enter into heaven into that sinless place called heaven and to be with God in eternity. It is always, as a believer, a great time to be alive, as Solomon's saying here. Let me read on a little bit here for time. Verse 9, young men, it is wonderful to be young. Oh, it is. Not, we all remember those days. <laughs> you know, it's funny because, uh, you know, as, as you get older, you you, don't, you forget to realize that you, your body does function like it used to. I know we walk by faith, but the reality is your, your body doesn't function like, like it used to. And I want to tell you this story because my, my son Max is playing football. And when I was a young man, I was a pretty good football player. And I had scholarships and all that. And, uh, and my son was bragging how good he was. And I said, I could beat you in a race. No, he said he could beat me in a race. And I said, I could beat you in a race. And I thought to myself, I'm going to beat my young my young whippersnapper here i got to show him because i was a very fast runner but when we got down on the field uh, in virginia and we started running my head was thinking i was young but my legs were not moving <laughs> because they have aged i thank god i still beat him in that race uh, but i didn't beat him by much but i still beat him by a couple of yards uh, and uh because we are getting older and uh it's nice to be young. I told my son, it's nice to be young. Uh, young man, it's wonderful to be young. Enjoy every minute of it. Do all that you want to do. Take in everything, but realize that you must account to God for everything that you do. What a beautiful, beautiful writing by Solomon. Praise God. So if you're watching me today and you're young, if you're watching us live and you're younger, uh, most of the young folks watch watch this after uh, the you know they're not earlier risers like us older folks, but uh, they watch it a little bit later. But I, I just want to encourage the young to enjoy your life, no matter what you see in the horizon. God still has plans for your life, and those plans are true. Enjoy your life, but remember as you're enjoying your life, and this is good for us older folks too. As we're enjoying our lives, realize that whatever we do, let's do it all for the glory of Christ Jesus. Let's do it to honor the Lord. Whether we eat, whether we drink, whatever we do, the Bible says, let's do it for the glory of God. And because we've got to give an account for our lives. And us older folks can say amen because there's things in the journey of our life that we didn't do it for God. And we didn't do those things that were pleasing in his sight. And we failed to remember that someday we got to stand before him and give an account for our lives. And there's some things I just don't want God to talk about in heaven. So I'm so grateful for the blood of Jesus, aren't you? That washes away all of our sins. And every day is a new day in Christ Jesus. And I'm so grateful to the Lord as an older man that the Bible says he forgets our sins as far as the east is from the west, and he puts them into the sea of forgetfulness where he doesn't remember them no more because that's the power of the blood of Jesus. So us who are older, let us rejoice and enjoy the life that God has given us, looking at eternity, knowing that eternity is far more surpassingly greater than the, that which we've ever experienced on the earth and that we thank God for his blood and for the blood of his son who washed us so, our sins away so that when we stand before him we can stand as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and let us do everything 
especially in these days, to honor the Lord. Family, whether you, whatever you say, whatever you do, wherever you go, whatever you're planning, do it in honor of God, knowing that you're going to stand before him and enjoy this life, whatever we have left on this earth. As Solomon said, it's a wonderful thing to be alive. And I just felt to encourage you on this Monday morning, no matter what the darkness is out there and the things that we're hearing, lockdown, shutdowns, uh, uh, digital currency and chipping people and food shortages and, and all of the things that they're trying to manipulate and put fear in people, don't let it overcome you today. Enjoy the life that you have because you're in this world, but you're not of this world. The system of this world is not your future. It's not even your present because you live in the kingdom of God. We're in, we're, we're, we're in this world, but again, we're not of this world. The Bible says we're pilgrims. We're just passing through. And there's a greater life ahead of us, far greater life ahead of us than what we've ever experienced behind us. Hallelujah. So let's enjoy it. And I felt to say this again and again today. I'm not going to let them get me down. Don't let them get you down. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy your church family. Praise God. Enjoy your walk with God. Keep pressing forward as we've taught. If you're just joining us uh, at the beginning of this chapter, keep pressing forward. Keep doing the work of God. Keep living for Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep planning your life and keep occupying until he comes. We don't know how much time we have left. We don't know if the rapture will take place today, tomorrow, next week. But we know we are that generation because we see the signs around us. And we're not going to let it bog us down. We're going to go out of this world, praise God, with a shout, with a celebration, praise God with all that, doing all that God asked us to do and doing everything for his glory and living life to the fullest, the life that God gave us when he put our spirit in our body at conception in the womb of our mother. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep the joy, everybody. Keep the victory. Keep your life going and live it to the fullest until Jesus comes. And so I, I close with this again. Young man, it's wonderful to be young. Enjoy every minute of it. Do all that you want to. Take in everything, but realize that you must give an account to God for everything you do. So banish grief and pain, but remember that, uh, so banish grief. Banish it. Get rid of it. Praise God. Isn't that beautiful? Get rid of grief, get rid of pain, get rid of worry, get rid of fear, get rid of trouble, push it aside, amen. Don't let it control your thoughts, your hearts, your desires, your aspirations, your praise, your faith, your joy, banish it. What? That's powerful, man. I wish I had a, a little bit more time with you this morning. Banish it, praise God, banish their threats. Banish their propagation of fear, control, and manipulation. Banish it because God is in control. Amen. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. But remember that youth with a whole life before that, but remember that youth with a whole life before it can make serious mistakes. That's what he says. We can make mistakes. And the one mistake we can make is not living this life that God gave us to the fullness and enjoying the life that he has blessed us with and enjoying the promises and experience in those promises. Praise God. Remember the song at the beginning, Ron Cannoli, I still have joy. After all that I've been through, I still have joy. After all the mistakes I've made, I still have his love. Praise God. And even after all, all of, all of, some of the failures, I still have victory because God is on my side. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed the Bible study to start your week. So you're going to go do what this week? No matter what you face, you're going to go out and enjoy the life that God 
has given you. Praise God. Amen. So let's do it. Let's pray. And let me speak by faith over you as you get ready for this amazing week ahead of us. Father, I just give you praise for your precious word today. What an amazing word that the Holy Spirit gave King Solomon. And we thank you for it this morning. And we thank you that we have it in our hands today. Lord, I just give you praise for the Bible. And I know we all give you praise for the scriptures. Thank you for Ecclesiastes chapter 11, Lord. We, we claim this by faith that we will live our life to the fullest. Hallelujah. And I just pray, Lord, that this week that your people will walk in your joy. They'll walk in your peace. Lord, their eyes will not see the current situations, but their eyes and the eye of faith, the eyes of faith will see your promises. We'll see their glorious future, and we'll even see into eternity, hallelujah, of the place and the purposes and the things that you have prepared for us in heaven someday. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that we walk in wisdom, we walk in honor this week, we walk in respect, and we walk in righteousness before you, knowing that we have to give that account. And Lord, may everything that we do this week honor you. And Lord, and may we may we continue as as faithful, faithful servants, faithful children, continually do the work and the things that you've called us to do and the things that you have planned for us. So I thank you for blessing your people this week, holding them in your skillful right hand, setting the angels of the Lord around them, Lord, and keeping them strong. And I declare by faith, Father, that your people are strong in you and the power of your might and that they are filled with the anointing the presence, and the glory of our God. Bless your people this week, Lord. Thank you for supplying all of their needs. Thank you for prospering them. Thank you for giving them health. And thank you, Lord, for using them for your glory to touch and change the life of another, as Solomon has said in Ecclesiastes 11. Thank you for our time together, Lord. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, God bless you, family. Don't forget this Million Man Walkout on Wednesday. I'm going to be a part of it uh, to support our children who are being bombarded with manipulation and very dark and demonic things when it comes to this gender identity. We're making a stand for our children. Make your voice heard, family. You, we live in a democracy, and we have the right to, uh, to claim our liberties and freedoms, and to protect our children. Praise God. So I'll be a part of it. I encourage you to be in support of it. Make your voice known uh, to these leaders who are trying to destroy our nation. We won't let them because we as the church are the resistance, and we're not going to run and hide. We're going to continue to sow, and we're going to sow righteousness into our land. Praise God. Well, God bless you, family. I love you so much. Have a terrific week. I'll see you Wednesday night. God bless you.